Hey mages, welcome to today's budget MTG Arena video. Today we're going to be looking at some really good competitive budget decks with fewer rares but still having the same power consistency of getting those really good wins that can help you ladder up on a budget on MTG Arena. Now when you look at you know a lot of the top meta decks, anything from like Mono Black, Mid Range, Azorius, Soldiers, Grixis Control, they all range between 30, 40, some go 40 plus rares in the decks. And that is a lot of wild cards to use up. So I've sourced out some good decks today that have a lot less than that. Starting off with the first deck that has 15 rare wild cards, a uh, mixture between rare and, uh, rare and mythic cards. And then, then towards the end of the video, we have some decks that have just the nine rare wild cards, which is very, very budget when like you consider what I just said about some of the other top meta decks that have so many 40 plus. I mean, that is just Grixis control and stuff like that. I mean, a lot of it is used up in the lands, of course, as well, but still the main decks are still chucking in 20, 25 plus in a best of one deck as well. So no sideboard. Um, you can imagine in best of three, there'd be even more. Um, so the first deck that we're going to look at is a pretty new deck on the scene, which is Simic Poison. Uh, poison is very prevalent in the meta at the moment, um, very much you know due to the fact of venerated Rot Priest. Uh, this little one, two, toxic one for one green mana. Whenever a creature you control becomes a target, a spell target opponent gets a poison counter. So you know this is all about targeting your creatures, and it works very well with this card that we had in standard before, and it is Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief, which is a Simic Colors 2-1 Fairy Rogue. Whenever a player casts a spell, that target only a single creature other than Ivy, you may copy that spell. So when you're doing, you know, looking at a creature like the Rot Piece that wants to be targeted and then gives someone a poison counter, you get to do it twice. It is pretty, pretty broken, this deck. It is very good. Um, there's various different Rot Priest decks out there, um, but this one is the, is the one for me that really does have the fewest rares. So you look at some other rares in the deck, it has Croaking Counterpart, always liked this card but never really used it. Um, has a tool for these, creating a token as a copy of target non-frog. Now, you know, you can't obviously copy the Ivy, but get more venerated rock priest because this isn't legendary on the battlefield and it can only be good and you know a quicker way to get more wins as well if opponent has maybe killed a couple of these you could then make another one if one's on the field which sounds really good it does come in except it's a 1-1 frog but you don't really care about that you just want the ability for this deck and then you get flashback as well so that works out to be pretty good also, March of Bergen in Life is a rare in the deck. Um, choose target creature with mana value less than X. Search your library for a creature card with the same name as that. So you can then go and search up your Rock Priest or anything you know that costs less as well. Um, you can also uh, make this a little bit cheaper by exiling green cards from your hand and then it costs two less. But to be honest, it's only one mana and the other good creature as well is Ivy, which is only two as well. Another creature in the deck is Storm, Tracer, uh, Storm Chaser Drake, 2-1 comes a target spell you control you draw a card so very good with this to help you draw the cards and go through your deck maybe just by protecting it we've got shore up in there tamios and also tyve or stand because you really do want to protect your rock priest and your ivy potentially but you know mainly your rock priest this is why this deck has a lot of protection and of course when you're targeting you're just going to be doing more poison counters so it works out to be really good also in the deck, Combat Research, which is another way to pump up. And if it deals damage to an opponent, you get to draw a card. So it's a very good tempo deck. Reminds me a little bit of Mono Blue, you know, protecting the creatures. Um, but you've only got to do, you know, half the damage with this poison. It's a very... Um, you know topical thing to talk about whether people like it in standard or whether people don't but at the moment it's there and at the moment the rock priest is not banned so while the rock priest is there you might as well take full advantage of it because if you craft it now and they do ban it you will obviously keep that in um, other formats potentially as well but then you would then get your wild cards back so at the moment it's a, it's a good craft uh, the land base um, only it just has the four rare lands for this deck it has three dream rope cascade and a yavimar coast if you want to go above the 15, obviously you can just add more of, you know, one more of these and potentially three more of these. But this is what's been getting the stats as is. And um, I think for 15 rare wild cards, this is a really good competitive deck. So now with the mixture of Twerra, Rare and Mythic cards, 
we have Gruul Wolves. Now, Wolves, very good tribal deck, aggressive deck, um, likes to get, you know, a lot of creatures on the board, swinging sideways. So if that's, you know, a type of deck that you enjoy playing, and even if you just like the Gruul colours, then this is, you know, really perfect with you. does have quite a few older cards as well. Um, it actually um, doesn't run any new cards at all. So potentially this, you know, you could have these all in your collection already. Um, I'm just double checking it doesn't, um, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Um, but yeah, Wolf Tribal has made a little bit of a comeback um, because of the budget side of it as well, you know, with just 12 rares. Now, you could make the land base a better. This obviously does run um, budget lands, uh, but it's still a competitive meta deck, so it's still knocking up those stats. Um, but you could easily swap these over for the rare Gruul lands if you want to go a little bit higher, but, you know, the main um, protagonists for this deck, the rares, are in the creatures in this deck. So we, if we have a little look at some of the rare lands, uh, rare creatures Halana, Aline and Partners really like this one this is a really good card I've come against this it can just you know come in straight away on the turn it plays put X11 counter on a target creature girl where X is its power and then it, um, the creature has haste as well so it's a 2-3 you're going to put two counters on this has first right reach can help you against flyers as well you know really good creature uh, Howland Pack Piper can't be countered. May put a creature card for your hand on the battlefield. It's a wolf. Untap it. You get to do it again. Now, obviously, this is werewolf tribal. Um, apart from obviously the Halana, which is just there as a really good creature, um, but the pa um, Piper really does does the work, and it can flip over day bound night day when they can flip over. It becomes a bigger creature. Uh, nice howler four four. So then we have Tovalar, and this is one of my favourite um, creatures, because I love drawing cards. Uh, whenever a wolf or werewolf deals combat damage, you get to draw a card. Um, and just incidentally, we'll have a look at the stats in this one. It does run 25 creatures, so you, you have a lot of creatures in the deck. Um, Tovalar also can flip as well with the day bound. Um, if you're beginning of your combat, if you control three or more wolf, wolves or werewolves, transform it. It becomes into the Midnight Scourge. Uh, whenever a wolf or werewolf control deals combat to the player, you get to draw a card again. But then also has the ability of sinking some mana into a wolf and it gets plus X plus O and trample, which is what you like. You do like a bit of trample. So if you're adding a bit of extra power on with Halana and then this is flipped over to the Midnight Scourge and then you can just go over with some trample potentially as well. Reckless Stormseeker adds to the aggressiveness of this deck as well because it can give another creature haste, very much like Halana as well. And then we have some really good, you know, low mana creatures. Uh, Kessig Naturalist, 2-2 two -two for the Gruul colours. Whenever it attacks, add the colours of Gruul. And to end of turn, you'll be, don't lose that mana as phases end. And what's good about this one is when it flips, it turns into an Anthem creature. So Wolves and Werewolves will get plus 1-1. One, one. Packs on Puck, you just get bigger, the old pup. Uh, begin a combat turn if you control another wolf, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it, and when you die, you gain a bit of life. So getting this down turn two is really good, and then just putting your walls into play, this can get really big and potentially block it, save yourself you know, a bit of damage, and then gain life as well, which is good. The Liberator is in there, helps against destroying artifacts or enchantments as well. And then we have Hungry Ridge Wolf. So this one... Uh, another wolf where we're battle gets plus one out and trample now trample is very good there's a lot of you know token decks out there a lot of those little poison um decks out there little one ones and you really want to get over the top of those sort of decks and um be aggressive and trample certainly helps that snarling wolf is the last creature we're going to look at here. oh no not the last creature. we do have one more i forgot about the fang blade uh this wolf gets plus two Plus two, you can play it, but you can only activate that once each turn. But, you know, still a one man that can come down and turn two attack for three seems pretty decent to me as well. So, yeah, Fangblade um, Brigand, uh, three, four, day bound. It has a bit of, um, you know, fire breathing. You can pump it up a bit, then it will give it fire strike, and this will flip over as well, which a lot of the wolves obviously do. Human werewolves flip into another werewolf as well, and it has various abilities and becomes a big four, five. That's just in there as a one. One of um but you know the ability of creatures you control get plus two plus naught for paying five when this flip is a nice little inclusion in the deck especially if you can add in the trample as well uh wolf stripe bit of fight ability as well we go into some room here we've got a braid in there play with fire um and then you've got lunar frenzy a bit more 
Trample in the deck. The theme of this deck should be probably Wolves Trample because we do have a lot of that in there. But first strike, do the damage, trample over. That's what we want to be doing with the deck. Uh, spoke out of land base it is very basic. A good way to upgrade this will be changing to the rural rare lands. Um, other than that, we have a Planeswalker, all in the Pax Hope. Uh, this is the Mythic in the rare. It just has two of these. Um, until end of turn, you may cast creature spells. Oh, they have flash. We have a lot of creature spells. 25, like I spoke about. You can create 2-2 two, two walls. It can flip over, and then it can become the Moon's Fury, where for zero, it becomes a 5-5 five, five werewolf creature, trample, indestructible, and haste. So, yeah, a very thematic tribal deck, very aggressive, and um, if you like turning creatures sideways, then this is probably the deck for you. Now with 11 rares, it's the ultra consistent, one of the best decks in standard, which is Mono Red. You either love it or hate it, uh, Mono Red is a very good deck, very low mana curve as you can see, looking at all those one drops in there. It does have a new addition as well um, from the new set, which is Solfim Mayhem Dominus uh, at the top end. Just a one of these, it's a 5-4, if a source you control would deal non-combat damage to an opponent or permanent opponent controls, it deals double that damage. Uh, you can pay one in the Phyrexian mana, discard two cards, put an indestructible counter on solve him as well. So potential could help you. Um, you know, this is as the deck was 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 like a source. This is what's been getting the good percentages. Um, you know, like 59, 60% plus. Um, so he has 21 plain basic mountains, which is really good. Whether you could save yourself a mythic bear, this is what's been getting the win. So this is what I'm showing you as a deck as. But potentially you could, if you don't want to spend that one mythic rare, you could probably save yourself. It's a one of in the deck, so how often it is going to be used or, or become helpful is is debatable. But it's in the deck, so let's you know let's have a look at the rest of the deck. A lot based around mechanized warfare. Uh, red artifact source you control or anything that's red would deal damage it deals that damage plus one instead so if red didn't need any more held to get a bit of extra damage in i've played someone that had three of these on the field once and i'll tell you what it was painful they hit me with like with a play with fire and just did me like five damage it's just disgusting um if only this was legendary for us non-red players um but other than that the deck has some new cards um that we had from um uh, was it brothers war with felton in there ronham excavator 2-2 two -two with haze can't block dealt damage exile that many cards on the top of your library so this is a really good card in the deck and um, a rare that i think is you know really does help mono red go through some cards as well um because uh, other than that you know you've got reckless impulse sorcery two mana so it does you know go through but this gives you a body and attacking creature that you can do as well so very good uh squee is one of the other rares in there a couple of squeeze i've seen some decks that run one of these some that run two and then they up the chandra so potentially you know see what you've got in your collection um you could maybe swap that round as well if you know if you so desire and then we have a lot of commons and uncommons and there's a lot of power in them like kumanu damage uh, something comes in with a counter, so if you haven't got your Swiss Spear in hand, then that can come in, and it's a 2-3 potentially on, on the second tick up, then this becomes a hasty creature as well. So yet again, another very aggressive aggro deck, this one with Phoenix, comes in with haste flying, and this can also be you know, brought back from the graveyard if you're attacking with three or more creatures as well. And then Voldoran just comes in, one damage, creates a blood token, so another bit of potential um, discard and draw card for the deck as well. Um, Lightning Strike, always prevalent. If this is in standard, this is always in the mono red decks. Three damage to any target for two mana. Instant speed, very, very good. Um, red decks probably know, you know, you've played against these, some manner of, of, of this kind of configuration, and you know what mono red is all about. But it, it's on there, it's a very, very consistent budget deck and for just 11 rares you know you will be able to rank up with this and like i say put in the soul from if you like if you've played self or if you played any more numbers of that let me know you know if you've already played with that in the mono red what it does for you and how good it is and whether you think even there's just a one drop whether it could be dropped you know for us budget players to save that one mythic but it's in there and it's that's what's you know this is what the deck that's getting the stats so yeah mono red if you like it and you like playing and you like ranking up quick and you like winning quick losing quick this is the deck for you with just the nine rares we go to the very good mono blue tempo deck um, deck has been around for a while new addition is a mercurial spell dancer a 2-1 aggressive creature one and a blue can't be blocked 
So it gets through that damage as well. And whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put an oil counter on it. When it does combat damage to play, you may remove two of those oil counters. If you do, when you cast your next instant sorcery spell, you get a copy and choose new targets. So interesting new card to the mono blue. Runs just the three of in there. So just 11 creatures in this and 27 non-creatures. So, you know, Mercurial potentially could be very good. We run cards like Consider Fading Hope. So, but you know, double bouncing, double draw cards protection with slip out the back um, probably not quite so good with some of the counter spells obviously essence scatter make disappears in there as well and spell pierce but you know with all the others you know it's going to be very good impulse thirst for discovery copying stuff like that could be good um, we do have um um, where is it? Blue Sun's Twilight. Gain Control. This is another new card from Phyrexia. Um, with mana value X or less, if X is 5 or more, you create a copy of that. So potentially taking a Shieldred or something like that could be really good for this deck, you know, if you're facing the mono black decks. Um, so yeah, some interesting new additions to Mono Blue that I find, you know, exciting that I want to play, especially Mercurial Spell Dancer that's been looked at a lot older formats than standard. So I feel like this could be a pretty good good card to be honest and then the other air ottawa soaring city just one of them in the land base as well so you know while a good card you potentially could go to eight rares and save yourself that and just have the 22 islands but it's still if you've got it in your deck put it in there because it you know it, it can help you bounce something so pretty good you know even your own creature as well so your telerian your haughty gin that is just amazing all these, you know, instants and sorceries that just make this so much better. They all cost one less as well. Uh, and it's not legendary. So a couple of these on the field, you could take something really good with Blue Suns. Um, so Haughty Jin is the way majority of the time that you will win the games. But having Mercury in there to potentially get a little bit of damage and then, um, you know, one swing potentially with the Haughty Jin. It could honestly be that. I've done that before. And then just fly over the top. Uh, Mono Blue is very good. It's very annoying to play against, as you probably well know, because they're countering, protecting. It's just so hard. Once they get the, you know, the creatures on the battlefield and start protecting, it makes it very hard to deal with, um, which is why it is a top meta deck with high percentages, because it just wins game. And with nine rares, this is very good. With these new card additions, four new cards, so exciting to try this new one. And I definitely will be crafting my Mercurials, I think, because I've not crafted them yet, um, to give this deck a spin for sure so we go to the last deck and it has just nine rares again and if you wanted to play poison but the 15 for the simic poison was just a little bit too much then we've got nine rares here with dear poison um a lot of the rares here are in the lands as well as you can see we do run a couple of dark slick shores we've got three shipwreck marshes a couple of underground rivers as well and there's also a couple from the new phyrexian set where uh, mirix add a colors add one man of any color activate this only if it enters the battlefield this turn uh, but the th uh, the three and tap create a one one colors might artifact token with toxic that can't block and that is just you don't sacrifice the land you can just pay in three and keep creating them so it's a very good land and very probably important to the deck as well um, so other than that uh, the actual main deck doesn't run any rares at all so you know you can make up what you can out of the lands but obviously this is what's been being consistent in the deck is this configuration like i've said in all of them um, but you know if you've got more you could probably add a few more you know a couple more does it maybe that extra ship rep marsh um, if you desire but this is you know mirix is probably one that i would really try and keep in there because paying three and tapping it's not even a legendary land either so you can have both of them on the field and late game making those toxic ones is going to be really good so the rest of the deck one of my favorite favorite little uncommons from Phyrexia was Voidwind Hybrid because it keeps coming back. It's a 2 1 flying with Proliferate, so it works well with Toxic. Um, when you do Proliferate, you return it from the graveyard back to your hand, you get to play again. So it's going to have to be exiled to be dealt with. Then we have cards like um, Bring the End in. So a lot of new cards in this deck, uh, but they are commons and uncommons mainly. Um, an experiment Augury that has Proliferate as well, so that will obviously help with the Voidwind. Prologue to Phrysis. Oh, I can never pronounce that one. Each opponent gets a poison counter, draw a card. Then we've got Serum Snare, returning stuff. So it's a very much, you know, it's very much like the mono blue deck, but mixing in poison, protecting creatures. But the addition of black means that we do have removal, like Drowning Anchor, Sorcery Speed, but we'll deal with 
a lot of creatures doing the minus 4-4 and proliferate. Sheldred, instant speed to get rid of that dropped Planeswalker as well. I love Sheldred. It's just a, a really sweet card. The ability to choose token, creature. I mean, but I've normally chose creature or Planeswalker. That's just the way the meta is at the moment. You know, if they're dropping Sheldred turn 4 and you've managed to deal with everything else, then you can just, you know, get rid of that straight away with this up and not take the damage from drawing card. Um, reject Imperfection, which is a counter spell. Uh, if, uh, if that spell is mana value three or less, Zoria Soldiers, um, you know, a lot of, you know, the Mono Blue Tempo, anything like that, the Slesney Enchantment decks, this card is going to be really good against. And potentially, if the Poison Can's on there, you're going to proliferate as well. It also uses Infectious Inquiry, basically because of the Poison Counter, I, I assume. Drawing two cards, lose two life, each opponent gets a Poison Counter. So this is, um, you know, more an aggro protection counterspell sort of deck. Definitely a deck that I would enjoy playing for sure. Um, getting your Void Ring on, chipping away with, the, you know, once you get that first poison counter with the prologue and everything like that, you can then proliferate your way to a win. You don't always, with this deck, I found with this type of poison deck, is that you just don't need to attack and do stuff like that. You just need to get that first poison counter on and then use all your proliferate to, you know, remove stuff, counter stuff, and then just deal damage to your opponent. It's a really good fun deck. Um, I recently did a zero budget deck like this. So if you like, you know, zero budget decks, check out my last few videos as well, because there are some on there with zero rares and there was a zero rare demo poison that people were just absolutely loving. But Adding these few more rares uh, in the land base does make, you know, I said in that video, it makes decks a lot more consistent and, and um, adding Mirex to that deck would be a great upgrade for that one as well. But this one, Dimmer Poison, a meta deck that's getting results and, you know, for a full non-rare actual um, creature and spell base is very good. And then the rares obviously just in the land base. Um, but that was some really good budget decks. They're competitive. Um, starting off with 15 rares, and we're going down to the last two decks that had just nine rares. Um, ultra budget, even budget is 15 rares for a meta performing deck. Um, not like my zero rares and five and under. That's super budget. But these are meta decks that are really getting really high percentages and that you could take to the ladder and get your wins with. Um, so if you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful, I could really appreciate you know giving it a thumbs up, giving it a like, leave me a comment what you like um other you know which of these decks you're going to play i'll be interested to know in any configurations or cars that maybe you've added to the decks and um yeah if you want to support me further and enjoy all the budget content you can become a total mtg patreon just follow the links down below and i very much appreciate that but um but that's been another budget video you lot take care and i see you on the next one